So I recently released my very thorough and detailed tutorial video on the new Harley Infotainment Control Unit, the IFCU Digital Dash System, which is now standard on select 2024 models and will be on other touring models into the foreseeable future. Now, during the creation of this tutorial video, I spent countless hours in the shop and out on the road learning everything there is to know about the IFCU, including the pros and cons of the system, because no instructions or information come with it. And you can get my detailed tutorial video that I created to help everyday bikers learn the IFCU, take advantage of its full capabilities and make it work best for them, by heading over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash IFCU or forward slash Harley Digital Dash, whichever is easiest for you to remember. And I'll link to that in the description below. In this video, I am going to give you my overall thoughts, insights, and opinions about this all new Harley Digital Dash system. So let's dive in. Welcome back, bikeholics. Ryan Erdocker here, lawbindingbiker.com. I always thank you. That's right, you. For checking back in and if you're new to the channel understand that you'll always get my honest opinions and reviews when i test motorcycles or in this case the new ifcu from harley it's what differentiates my channel from so many others my only mission is to help as many bikers as i can worldwide and i want you to be fully informed oh and this channel is completely independent so to make sense of this new ifcu we really need to put things in perspective and look at harley's recent past in regards to dash infotainment systems it's no secret that harley's first attempt but the original 6.5 GT boombox system we saw on the 2014 to 18 touring models in partnership with Harman Kardon was mediocre at best and did nothing to gain customer confidence in regards to infotainment systems on Harleys. Now, third-party developers tried to fix that unit over the years with software updates that often broke more than they fixed. It was a very laggy and clunky operating system, did not have a great UI, and it had a plethora of problems. I believe realizing this issue with the original unit that Harley tried to self-correct in 2019 when they released the updated version of the boombox calling it the 6.5 GTS. Many riders were so unhappy with the original unit that they literally upgraded to a 2019 Harley just to get rid of it and get the new 6.5 GTS system. And at first there was no way for riders to upgrade from the older boombox to the new GTS unit without buying a completely new bike. And many customers were very dissatisfied with this. But it seems hardly listened because it wasn't long after that when we learned it was now possible to upgrade to the new GTS unit, which I did. And I'll put a link to that very detailed tutorial video in the description below. The other thing that made riders irritable is that neither unit was built with internal wireless Bluetooth headset pairing capabilities, and you needed to buy an expensive add-on wireless headset interface module called the WIM from Harley and install it to allow wireless headset pairing which I did, and I'll link to that tutorial video in the description. And the icing on the cake was that once you had the WIM installed, to get full functionality and stereo sound, you could only use a Harley branded Senna wireless Bluetooth headset, which was also priced higher than the non-branded Senna headsets. Now, my opinion is that the new GTS unit was a big step up from the original unit in terms of functionality, user interface, and it came with Apple CarPlay originally and Android Auto followed sometime later with a software update. But the GTS unit still had its fair share of glitches, bugs, and frustrations over the years with software updates put out to try and fix them. But I will say, at least the updates didn't break things or make it worse like the original unit. And if you wanna get my longtime best-selling boombox infotainment system tutorial videos, simply head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Harley Boombox, link in the description. And the Harley Boombox was not the only frustrating in-dash motorcycle infotainment system as the Indian Ride Command had just as many, if not more issues than the Boombox did. And yes, I have spent a ton of time with the Ride Command system and I learned all of its glitches. It's definitely time for Indian to retire that system. So having looked at Harley's recent infotainment system history, it's no wonder that many riders are somewhat concerned about the all new IFCU and digital dash system that consumes your inner dash. So it seems clear to me at this point that Harley has learned from the past and I can see that engineers have much tighter control of the new IFCU. I spoke with engineers and Harley reps in person, and although they didn't develop the entire operating system called Skyline OS, they seem to have a tighter control and input in its development. And I also see Harley is being much more careful with the release of the IFCU into the wild. The reason I say that is because customers can't even update the software in the IFCU themselves right now, 
and a dealership technician has to do it. It seems to me that they want to be on top of any bugs that need to be fixed upon release of the system and only want to allow their technicians to do it. With that said, that could be counterproductive for Harley longer term in my opinion. And that's because if there are bugs that need to be fixed, many customers won't make time to schedule an appointment and take their bike to a dealership for a simple 10 minute software update. Thus, the rider will continue to operate an IFCU with issues, making any issues last longer term for the rider, which may cause a negative rider perspective. And I'm fully expecting Harley is aware of this issue and will relinquish total control of software updates in the near future and allow us customers to make the updates like we could with the Boombox system. And in my IFCU tutorial video, I show you exactly how to update the system software and amplifier software once Harley allows customers to have access to the update files. I might also suggest that you head over to the Law Abiding Biker store and pick yourself up one of our awesome Biker Gripper motorcycle cell phone mounts. It is the sexiest, sleekest, strongest motorcycle cell phone mount in the world. We've been selling it for a lot of years. That way you can get your phone up where you can see it in a safe position. Now, although you have the infotainment unit here, there's still a lot of reasons that I like my phone up in that mount because there are just some functions that are just much quicker to go ahead and do on the phone in combination with the infotainment unit. And I'll link to the Biker Gripper in the description below, or at any time, you can just head over to the Law Abiding Biker Store and search for Biker Gripper. So now I wanna to talk to you about my overall experience, thoughts, opinions, and the pros and cons of the IFCU Digital Dash system based on my many hours spent mastering it. And before we get in the weeds too much here, I do wanna say that it is a trend for auto manufacturers to develop operating systems for these digital dash and infotainment systems, even though they are not software development companies per se. And we consumers have seen so many clunky and buggy in-dash auto systems with horrible user interfaces over the years that we've unfortunately become somewhat accustomed to it. Let's face it, after using your iPhone that works so smoothly with a beautiful UI, we then have to get in our cars and use these clunky in-dash systems. It's just not a great experience, which includes my Ford F-150, which has its fair share of bugs and clunky menu systems. And this is why many of us bypass these auto in-dash operating systems as much as we can by just using Apple CarPlay and using the in-dash unit as a mirror only which is a much better experience. Now, with all that said, and having used many in-dash motorcycle infotainment systems over the years, I was pleasantly surprised at how responsive the Hardy IFCU was to touch and toggle commands without lagging. And it works fine with gloves too. Now I'll admit, I was not expecting this much responsiveness. And for an auto manufacturer style user interface, developers organized it much better than the Boombox system and it's easier to get around. But there are still many menus to get to and there is a learning curve for sure to use it to its fullest capability. But it is a beautiful interface to look at with completely integrated digital gauges. I do really appreciate the aesthetics of it and they did a great job in my opinion. The screen and items on it are very clear and large enough to read. There is a high contrast mode for writing in bright sunlight that is sufficient in my experience. Overall, it's the best and most responsive auto manufacturer digital dash system that I've used to date. But certainly, it has its minor issues and we'll get to those in just a bit. But before we do, I want you to know that to use the embedded navigation, there is a subscription fee of $349 for three years with live weather, traffic, and map updates. There will be a less expensive renewal fee in three years, but we don't yet know the amount. But if you didn't renew, your maps will still be there and work, but they will no longer update. And of course you'll lose live weather and traffic. Now, some complain about the subscription fee and I understand. However, we do need to consider that on the older boombox system, there was no embedded navigation fee. However, to update your maps, you had to pay anywhere from $150 to $200 each time, and you didn't get live weather and traffic. So maybe the subscription fee is a better model? I don't know. I'm just throwing the information out there. And let me know your thoughts about the subscription fee and your over thoughts on this new IFCU system. I always look forward to reading them and I know Harley reps often read them too. And if you're wondering, if you don't get the embedded navigation, you'll be presented with a QR code to buy it each time you try to view navigation in the IFCU. Oh, and just real quick, if you find this video useful or helpful, 
you want to throw me some love, please consider hitting that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit. Another biker joins the revolution and we'd love to have you be part of it. Now, before I get into some of the current glitches and issues I found with the IFCU, I want to remind everyone that this is a computer and it was just released. So like all computers and electronic devices, such as your smartphone, this unit will require software updates to work things out. This is very common. And again, overall, this is the best and most responsive auto manufacturer digital dash system that I've used to date, and I've really enjoyed my experience with it. And so I only say this once, many of the things I'm about to talk about will likely be fixed with software updates. One of the things I found is that you can't view live weather in the embedded navigation while moving, and it's grayed out which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because you can operate most other things within the system while moving down the road. Also, a customer can't currently purchase the navigation subscription on the Harley website as the page doesn't have a buy button. For now, you have to go to the dealership to have it done. And of course, they will charge you a shop rate as they did with me, which theoretically makes the subscription fee more than $349. And if the embedded navigation is not for you, then all iPhone users can just enjoy Apple CarPlay. And don't worry, I'll get to Android Auto in just a bit. In my IFCU tutorial video, I show you exactly how to purchase and get the embedded navigation up and running on your unit, once Harley allows us to buy it online and install it ourselves. And just real quick, we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a ton of man hours, effort, and expenses go into keeping this channel going strong. There is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member, and I'll link to that in the description below. By signing up, there are a lot of benefits such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. It really is nothing but bikers helping and connecting with other bikers in there. You get access to podcasts early, access to live video broadcasts and chat, premium videos up on request, and of course, access to those ride meetup and events. We definitely appreciate you considering becoming a member. Now let's get back into your video. And as I mentioned, a dealership visit is required right now for a system software update, which is super inconvenient. My biggest gripe with the software updates is why they developed it. So we have to take time to download an update file and then upload it to the IFCU. This is really outdated to me. And it seems since I have my IFCU connected to Wi-Fi for map updates, live weather and traffic, that the software update should automatically download and update like on my smartphone. After all, this is how my Ford F-150 does it, so we know they could have developed it this way. I really hope that's coming with future updates. After all, this would give Harley full control of when they pushed out those updates. Also, it seems that software update downloads will only work if downloaded to a PC right now and not Mac. Interestingly, I think that's just because they haven't actually tested downloading the files with a Mac, because I was able to grab a late 23 amplifier software update for the 2023 CVOs with the IFCU and it downloaded and uncompressed just fine on my Mac. Now for reference, the boombox was the same way and was PC only out of the gate, but then Mac support was added shortly after. And I fully expect this will happen with the IFCU. Next, I wanna put the Android auto argument to rest. All Android users need to just accept the fact that Google discontinued development and support for Android Auto for two-wheel vehicles. And yes, that means for your motorcycle. And yes, Android Auto will still work on older head units that had it originally installed, but it can't be installed on new units, which is why it is not available on the IFCU. Now, some Android users, as always, when I state this simple fact, will still argue in the comments below and blame Harley without being armed with any facts or links for reference because they are simply upset, and I get it. But instead of being angry with Harley for this, consider contacting Google support and see if you can get Android Auto for two-wheel vehicles revived. And just because Android Auto doesn't work doesn't mean you can't use the system. You can still pair your Android phone with the system and use all the internal options and you can still play music and make phone calls from your phone. And for reference, yes, the IFCU does offer Apple CarPlay and it works beautifully on the system. I love using it. And a few of you will also be frustrated with the fact that the IFCU does not internally support satellite radio and there is no add-on module for such. I spoke directly to Harley engineers about this 
and they stated that they didn't find it necessary as everyone has a smartphone now that achieves more than satellite radio can. But I know that some of you have some specific shows you listen to on something like Sirius XM radio, and I understand that but this is the decision that was made. With that said, my opinion is that satellite radio has been dying over the past years because of smartphones. You see, we don't need satellite radio to listen to offline media as we can just download things like music and podcasts to our smartphones to listen to when there's no cellular signal. This is the same reason embedded navigation in these systems is dying too, as we can all download our GPS maps for offline use and we still get full turn-by-turn -turn navigation. But I know there are some diehard Sirius XM fans still out there, and all I can say is that I'm sorry you don't have the option on this unit. One of the software glitches I'm experiencing at this time is that even though my smartphone has been paired to the IFCU via Bluetooth, it doesn't always auto connect at startup, and I have to quickly go into device settings and force connect it. Also, you can't currently delete a contact favorite, and when clicking on a contact address, it does not open the embedded navigation for directions. Also, if not using Apple CarPlay and relying on the internal system, text messages from the smartphone are not loading, so you can't voice reply to a message either. Non-Apple CarPlay internal voice commands are very slow, and it can take up to 15 seconds to load a map as you watch the pulsating orange bar on the bottom of the screen. Again, unfortunately, this is common for auto infotainment dash systems. Also, some specific menu items won't select or activate using the left toggle or thumb pad, and you have to use the touch screen. And with a few specific menus, when you hit the menu back button, instead of taking you back just one menu level, it forces you out and all the way back to the root menu system. And currently, you can upload a saved GPX navigation file from Harley Ride Planner into the IFCU, but then it errors and says it can't open the ride. I downloaded the GPX file on both PC and Mac, and I got the same results. But understand there are still two other ways to easily get your Ride Planner rides into the IFCU, and I show you all that in detail in my IFCU tutorial video. Again, link in the description. Also, once you import a multiple day ride plan, it splits it up as expected. But when you want to delete, say a 10 day trip, you have to go into each day, select it and delete it. This is cumbersome and we saw this with the boom box. There should definitely be a way to bulk select an entire trip and delete it all at once. And this is not a pro or con, but just be aware that this IFCU was specifically designed to work within the Cardo wireless Bluetooth headset ecosystem, not Senna, like the older boombox system. If you do get other branded headsets to pair, you'll have issues and we have many reports of that already. Now, Harley has a branded Cardo PackTalk Edge, but it's not necessary to buy the branded unit, as I've been using a non-branded Cardo PackTalk Edge with the system and it all works great. And if you appreciate this video and all the helpful videos we put out to help the biker community, please consider purchasing a Cardo headset directly from the Law Abiding Biker store. We have them in stock and we'll get them shipped to you right away. We're just a bootstrap company of bikers helping bikers, and we appreciate every single customer. And I'll link to those Cardo headsets in the description below. Oh, and if you haven't listened to the Law Abiding Biker podcast, you are really missing out, as we talk about issues like this and many others in a lot more detail. And you better believe we have a lot of fun doing it. You can listen on our free smartphone app or on any other major podcast platform by simply heading over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash app link in the description. So the biggest question many have and that I can't answer at this point is how will the IFCU operate in five or even 10 years? Because after all, I had my last Harley Street Glide special for 10 years before upgrading to my 2024. And how will the longer term support for the IFCU be from Harley? Will the IFCU slow down and start lagging over time? And if so, how will it be handled by support? How long will the third party company that developed the Skyline OS operating system support it? Well, only time will tell. And as a commitment to all that purchased my Hardy IFCU, Ride Planner, or Boombox tutorial videos, is that as major things change or develop, I will keep you informed via a new free video file. And you'll be emailed each time that happens, so you can always stay informed. All right, I'm popping a couple of videos on the screen here for you. Hopefully something useful or entertaining, heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching videos on the channel, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get bikeholics peace i woke up feeling like this gonna be my day i got that popping fire